Today we're going to the track in search of the absolute best motor cooling options for a mid-motor two-wheel drive race buggy. And we have a special guest with us today. It's the co-owner and CEO of A Main Hobbies, Kendall Bennett. He and I are going to explore five different fan cooling methods and test them out with five minute timed runs on our high traction carpet track. We'll then record the temperature results of each of those runs and compare the results later. So which cooling method will be the best? Let's find out. Why are we doing this? We recently wrapped up a build series where we were slowly upgrading this team associated B6.2 competition race buggy with a $50 budget. Now during that series, we ran into overheating issues that we fixed with one method, but it's not the only method available. And quite honestly, we don't even know if it's the best method. And with only a $50 budget, we couldn't afford to buy all the different parts and fan mounts to do all these tests. So that's why today we're gonna test them all, which include mounting the fan on the factory side guard mount, which is pressed up right against the body. Then we'll test the same configuration, except with a hole in the body for ventilation. Next, we'll test an angled fan mount that puts the fan behind the motor. Then we'll test an aftermarket waterfall brace with a fan mount. And lastly, we'll test an aftermarket battery brace with a fan mount. Now, before we begin, the test bed is this B6.2 that we used in our build series. It has a lightweight hybrid pinion gear and also a slipper eliminator to make the drivetrain more lightweight and efficient. And that's paired with a 17.5 turn motor and an LIHV battery that we're only charging up to 8.4 volts. And then lastly, a Protec 30 mil aluminum fan. And I know that not all two wheel drive race buggies out there have the same fan mount options and aftermarket mounts available as this buggy, but hopefully these tests will give you some insight into what methods work great and which do not. So to the track. We installed the fan in the stock factory mount positioned right up against the body. The outside temperature was 98 degrees and we set the timer. Okay, it's rolling. Then Kendall drove for five minutes. When the timer went off, he finished the lap he was on and drove straight up to our table for a temp reading. The max temperature reading was 217 degrees. With the sun beating down hard, it was difficult getting a clear straight on shot with the temp gun. 217? 217, holy smokes. That's pretty hot, isn't it? That's really hot. To cool the car, our pit area had air conditioning. Coming out about 65. 65. And we set the buggy on this fan until the motor reached 85 degrees, and we did this for each test. So in our second test, leaving the fan where it is, but we're using Kendall's body, which has a massive hole right there on the side. Okay. So our ambient temps went up one degree. It's 99 now. Okay, you're on. Are you checking up on these jumps to try to downside them? Good? You're just hitting the brakes? Oh, this one I do, and this one I do hit the brakes a little bit. Oh, right there on the big dude? Yeah. yeah. Oh, this one I check out too. Right off the bat, it's 210. That's 7 degrees for it. So it's still pretty warm. Man, I thought it would be better than that. While we waited for the motor to cool down, we asked Kendall some of the questions you guys submitted in yesterday's YouTube community post. Where are you from and do you have any pets? I am from Australia, in uh, Melbourne, Australia. And we have two pets. I have a uh, dog named Baxter and another dog named Rosie. And they're both doodles. You have two dogs? Two dogs. I didn't know that. Yeah. Have you ever considered Apple Pay as yes. a checkout option? Yes, we are working on Apple Pay, hopefully before the end of the year. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. So that's a possibility. That's How tall are you? I am six foot seven. Holy smokes! Just tad on it. Do you have a favorite motorsport? Uh, yes, uh, MotoGP, motorcycle racing. Oh, really? And then uh, probably Formula One after that. Okay. Motor G MotoGP is my favorite. I mean, if you want to talk about my favorite <laughs> RC racing, my favorite RC racing of all time is 1/8 scale on road. Nitro or electric? Yeah, nitro. Nitro. That's the most fun I ever had. Those but it also broke my pocketbook, so I stopped racing. Yeah, those are expensive. Those <laughs> are super expensive. They're so hooked up though and fast. 
Oh, it was the most it's fun ever. It was so much fun. Using foam tires? Yeah. How and why did you get into the RC business? Uh, well, I got into it because I wanted to write software for e-commerce. But at the same time, I was doing a lot of racing at the time. I was traveling around a lot and racing 8 scale. And I needed some way to afford my parts. So <laughs> I started it to make parts cheaper for me and also to build software for e-commerce. Right, you were a big time competitive racer. Yeah, I was on the Thunder Tiger race team as well. I was on Mugen before that on 50% team and then I was on 100% Thunder Tiger team for a while. Wow. Are you going to open a store in North Carolina in the same area as the warehouse and then somebody else has to go along with that? Or do you plan to expand your brick and mortar stores in any of the eastern areas? Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to do a store in North Carolina. We might, but there's already good hobby shops there, so I don't, we don't see a major need for it at the moment. But maybe. We don't have any major plans at the moment for doing that. Yeah. Uh, as for expanding our retail stores, um, we don't really have any plans to expand those at the moment. Somebody asks, what did you have for breakfast? Uh, today I always had a cup of coffee. Oh, really? Yeah. That's all you've had today? Yeah, the white mocha, that's it. Well, it's, I guess sometimes that's all a racer needs. <laughs> See, coffee's the answer to everything. Let's continue. Okay, now we're gonna test with the fan back here on the angled fan mount. And we have a little bit of space on the body here. Yep. So that the fan can breathe. Hanging out the side. Yeah. 100 degrees. Okay, you're on. Look at the adhesive is falling right, apart. What do we got? Oh, dude, 197. To fit the waterfall brace, we had to re-solder the motor wires to make room. So the waterfall brace with the fan is hitting the body a little bit up here in the top corner. Just kind of see in there a little bit. It's kind of tricky, but if you notice the side of the body, it pretty much comes down to the side of the chassis. It's close. It seems like it's sticking up a little bit. Yeah, we're going to roll with it. Yeah. 101 degrees ambient temps. And go! For some reason, the microphone on the camera was glitching out here, so we turned down the audio, but temps reached 181 degrees. So this mount hits the, bat, the body as well. So yeah, put the body on there. Let's see how high it sticks up. Yeah, so this one sticks up quite a bit. It barely even hits the Velcro on the side there because it's hitting yeah. inside. Yep. We'll see how it goes well, there. 101 ambient temps. Go! Alright. Come on. Oh, it's hot. 197. That's actually significantly hotter than a waterfall mount. Oh, that's... 186, it's cooling down. Well, the waterfall was like 170 or something, right? It's definitely cooling yeah, down now, water... it's running. It was 183. The waterfall was 181, I thought. Right up to that, yeah. So that was 190 something, sir. The waterfall was the best. Yeah. Yeah. Waterfall was the best. So it was a really hot day out there, but of all the fan configurations that we tested, the waterfall brace made the biggest impact to motor temps. Now something unique about this waterfall mount that probably helps out a lot is this inside cavity here, that once you put your fan on there and you've got your motor right behind, it really just helps direct all the airflow directly on the motor and it's right next to the motor. Yet it's still far enough away to not have any interference between the fan and the motor magnets, at least that we experienced. Now another product that would probably work really well is this fan blaster. This is the same type of situation with this cavity. It just sits up right on the motor can like that and acts like a shroud, focusing all of the fan's airflow right onto the motor. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't fit inside of our B6.2, so we didn't try it out, but in other applications, it probably would work really well. Now, a note about our temperature results. We were cooling the motor down to 85 degrees in between our tests, but that was really the temperature of the motor can. How hot was the core of the motor where the magnets are? It's hard to say. 
If you compare today's results with the results from the build series, you'll notice that the heat difference is much greater today. But there's a lot of factors here, like the core of the motor not cooling down before the next test. We also have a brand new carpet surface that has a lot more traction. Kendall was also doing all the driving, not me, and he and I have different driving styles. Measuring temps with the temp gun is really tricky sometimes to get the temp gun on the same spot of the motor for each test. And how quickly you can get the temp gun on the motor right after a run makes a big difference. If the car sits there for even 30 seconds, then your motor temps could drop 10, 15, 20 degrees by the time you actually temp it. So we try to keep each test consistent as possible, but there's a lot of variables at play here. Uh, we are confident, however, that the waterfall brace did perform the best. Now, big thanks to the boss man, Kendall Bennett, for coming out and driving lap after lap in 100 degree weather. He's a really good driver and a pretty awesome dude. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and leave us any questions or comments down below. I'm Brett from A-Main Hobbies. Thanks for watching.